Hey fellow lab rats, this is Rebecca from the Lab Rat YouTube channel. In this lecture video, I'm going to be discussing an introduction to homatopoietic neoplasms. All right, let's get started. This lecture is an introduction to hematopoietic neoplasms. Uh, neoplasm or tumor means new growth and these neoplasms arise due to a dysregulated proliferation of a single transformed cell. These mutations or mutation cause that transformed cell to eliminate its dependence on external growth factors to regulate its proliferation. And that just seems like a whole lot of jargon. Um, in simple terms here this means that the cell just does whatever it wants. It just grows and grows independently of other factors. Um, so hematopoietic neoplasms are unregulated, uncontrollably growing blood cells. Neoplasm changes may either be acute or chronic. Acute neoplasms generally develop suddenly and need prompt treatment. Those that are chronic develop more slowly and may need management over a many year period. So this is a proliferation of a normal marrow element, usually a clonal disorder. And what this means is that there is gonna be one cell lines or multiple cell lines of normal elements. So for example, a massive proliferation of monocytes. So monocytes are normal. They're supposed to be made, right? But when they are uncontrollably produced, that is when it becomes an issue. So this is uh, an uncontrollable uh, proliferation and an accumulation of blood cells within the marrow, peripheral blood, uh, and or other tissues. So this is just an unregulated proliferation, meaning it's independent of growth factors. Now there can be benign neoplasms, meaning there is no spreading to other tissues. Um, these may be considered precancerous depending on the neoplasm, um, or they can be malignant neoplasms, meaning that it spreads to other tissues within the body. And malignant neoplasms are what we consider uh, cancerous. The term aleukemic leukemia is when the abnormality is only present within the bone marrow, so not within the peripheral bloodstream. Lymphoma is when the abnormal cells are present within lymphoid tissue, like in the thymus or lymph nodes, for example. So we have an unregulated, uncontrolled proliferation of a certain cell type just going crazy in the bone marrow. And because of that, normal hematopoiesis of other cell types that are normal uh, reduces. So patients can be anemic uh, because there may be a reduction of red blood cells being produced. They may get thrombocytopenia which is a decreased platelet level, or they can get certain granulocytopenias, meaning a reduction of granulocytes, uh, of course, depending on the type of neoplasm. Lymphopenia, so a decreased level of lymphocytes, is actually usually not present um, in these um, unless there is lymph node involvement. And this is because lymphocytes mature in the lymph tissue, not within the marrow where the, this neoplasm is happening. Leukemic hiatus is a jump or a gap in the development of cells. Uh, there are many blasts in this, which are the most immature form of cells. And then there's a lot of mature cells. So there's a lack of the intermediate maturational stages from blast to mature cell. So a good way to think of this is like, uh, like let's say there's a five-year-old and then suddenly that five-year-old kid, right, appears 60 years old. Uh, there is no intermediate stage from that five year to 60 year period. It just jumps, you know, super immature and then super mature. So what causes a patient to develop leukemia? Uh, most are from uh, mutations in the cells. Uh, some can be caused by radiation. So this would be when a patient has a different type of cancer and then undergoes radiation treatment. Uh, this increases the risk for the future development of leukemia, unfortunately. Of course, there's always risk for radiation. Um, certain chemical exposures can cause it. Uh, there are some studies that show links to certain viruses causing leukemia as well. And also defective anti-tumor proteins uh, can lead to it. So let's talk about these. So myelodysplastic syndrome, um, or MDSs, are a group of benign hematopoietic disorders that are characterized by ineffective hematopoiesis. So these disorders have failure of the bone marrow, peripheral cytopenia, which is a reduction in the number of cells in the peripheral bloodstream, and have a risk of developing leukemia. 
They are subgrouped based upon the percentage of blasts present, uh, the presence or absence of ringed sideroblasts, and the number of cytopenias and dysplastic cells, uh, cell lines affected. These disorders, um, according to the World Health Organization, or WHO, um, are refractory anemia, refractory anemia with excess blasts, refractory cytopenia with multilineage dysplasia, 5Q syndrome, and unclassifiable myelodysplastic syndromes. Now, myeloproliferative disorders, MPD, um, also known as myeloproliferative neoplasms, or MPNs, are when the bone marrow is hypercellular, meaning there is an abundance of a certain cell type in the bone marrow. So erythrocytosis, granulocytosis, and or thrombocytosis. At the time of this lecture, the World Health Organization classifies MPDs or MPNs as chronic myelogenous leukemia, chronic neutrophilic leukemia, chronic eosinophilic leukemia, chronic idiopathic leukemia, chronic idiopathic uh, myelofibrosis, polycythemia vera, and essential thrombocythemia. These also include um, unclassifiable myeloproliferative diseases. These myeloproliferative disorders or myeloproliferative neoplasms have negative effects on other cells. So anemia, uh, they're prone to infections, bleeding, um, because there's going to be a decreased platelet count in theory, um, potentially. Uh, patients can also experience bone pain and weight loss. And unfortunately, if not treated, death occurs in these patients. There are two hematopoietic malignancy classifications, FAB and WHO. So the French, American, British, or FAB classifications of neoplasm uh, classify based on Romanowski stain smears and cytochemical stainings, um, so the cellular morphology of the cells. FAB classification classifies acute leukemias um, as uh, when there is greater than 30% blast cells present. The World Health Organization, or WHO, classifies based on cell morphology and something called flow cytometry. So flow cytometry is a technique that is used to detect and measure both physical and chemical characteristics of a population of cells. WHO classification classifies acute leukemias when there is greater than 20% blast cells present. The WHO classification of neoplasms is the current standard for diagnosis, at least at the time of the making of this lecture video. So in leukemia, what cells can be affected? Lymphocytes, granulocytes, monocytes, erythrocytes, and megakaryocytes, so all the cell lines. Uh, there are two main classifications, lymphoblastic and myeloid, and those are uh, further divided into whether or not they are acute or chronic. So as a review, acute leukemias are a sudden onset of immature cell precursors within the bone marrow and then into the peripheral blood. There are an increase of malignant cells because they cause the normal cells to be reduced less within uh, the marrow. Chronic leukemias have a slower onset um, and they have uh, increased mature cells within the bone marrow um, and then into the peripheral blood. So acute is sudden and there's immature cells whereas in chronic, it's a slower onset and has increased mature cells. The peak incidence of acute leukemias is from two to five years of age, so in children, unfortunately. Um, the incidence of it decreases in the patient's second and third decade of life, and then it rises again steeply after 50 years of age. Uh, usually, child leukemias uh, tend to be the acute versions. Uh, CML, which is chronic myelogenous leukemia, usually occurs in young to middle-aged adults, and chronic lymphocytic leukemias, uh, or CLL, uh, occur in older adult patients. So how are these diagnosed in the laboratory? So the patient will first get a complete blood count and differential, and the laboratory professional, which is us, will identify that there is an issue. Um, so we are the first people to look at the patient's uh, complete blood count and differential, of course, and identify, hey, there's a problem here. Uh, that usually indicates a pathology review. So at that point, a pathologist will review it and determine, yeah, there, there's likely a leukemia going on here, or definitely like, suspicious of a leukemia, and they will order a bone marrow collection on this patient. So the bone marrow is aspirated and biopsied. 
Then flow cytometry is performed, so the immunological markers are identified with that, as well as cytochemical stains uh, are performed. So this determines what type of cancer, so what lineage this leukemia is, you know, whether or not it's um, affecting the lymph lymphocyte line or the erythrocyte line, you know, those types of things. Cytochemical stainings, which I mentioned on the previous slide, help to identify what type of uh, leukemia that the patient is experiencing. So these special stains either stain certain enzymes that cells have or non-enzymatic substances like lipids and glycogen. And again, these cytochemical stains are used in conjunction with flow cytometry and right genes of stain morphology to help determine uh, what type of leukemia the patient is dealing with. The types of specimens used for this can be the peripheral blood smear, bone marrow biopsies, aspirates or touch preps, um, or lymph node sections and touch preps from those. For enzymatic identification, the specimen must be fresh. Uh, depending on the assay, specimens can be fixed using methanol, ethanol, acetone, or formalin. The types of uh, cytochemical stains are broken down into two main categories. Uh, those uh, that stain enzymes and those that stain non-enzymatic substances. The types of enzymatic stains that we're going to discuss are myeloperoxidase, specific and nonspecific esterase, alkaline phosphatase, and acid phosphatase. And the non-enzymatic stains are Sudan Black B, period, periodic acid shift, and toluidine blue O. Myeloperoxidase, or MPO, is the first stain we're going to be discussing. Primary granules of the cells of the neutrophil and eosinophil uh, lineage contain the enzyme peroxidase. Some monocytes can also be positive with this stain as well. So this includes myeloblasts, promyelocytes, myelocytes, and metamyelocytes, and then of course mature neutrophils and eosinophils. Uh, this is not found in lymphocytes or lymphoblasts. All right, well, cool. So we know what cells have peroxidase in them. So what does it matter? So this helps us to distinguish between acute myelogenous leukemia, also called AML, and acute lymphocytic leukemia, also called ALL. And this is because the myeloperoxidase stain is going to stain positive uh, the myeloid-derived uh, myeloid cells and not the lymphoid-derived cells. Sudan Black B is also a stain that we're going to be discussing later on. Um, that is similar to the MPO stain, but MPO is more specific than the Sudan Black B. So the dye used in myeloperoxidase stain is usually 3,3-diaminobenzidine. Uh, the peroxi peroxidase in the granules of the cells that, uh, of course, are peroxidase positive, die with this stain. And I mean dye as it dyes a certain color, not dye as in death. Uh, the peroxidase uh, oxidizes the dye in the presence of peroxide, and a brown to black stain forms at the site of that reaction. So this is what it looks like on the right-hand side of the slide. Esterases are a type of enzymatic cytochemical stain that differentiate between myeloid cells and monocytes. Uh, specific esterase stains, um, the uh, myeloid cell precursors, um, and it's always negative in monocytes. The specific esterase stain uses the substrate naphthol ASD chloroacetate esterase uh, for this stain. Uh, this detects esterase enzyme that is present in the primary granules of neutrophils, basophils, and mast cells. Uh, this will not stain eosinophils and monocytes. The nonspecific esterase, esterase stain uses the substrates alpha naphthyl acetate and alpha naphthyl butyrate to stain the enzyme esterase present in monocytic cells, so monocytes and macrophages. This will not stain in granulocytes or lymphocytes. The dye for this stain is uh, perocinoline, uh, which appears red when positive. Leukocyte alkaline phosphatase, or LAP, or a LAP stain, is a stain that detects the alkaline phosphatase enzyme activity in primary granules of neutrophils. This enzyme is not present in eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, or monocytes, just in neutrophils. So this stain is useful in determining if a patient has chronic myelogenous leukemia, also called CML, or a leukemoid reaction, because those two look similar. CML and a leukemoid reaction look very similar. The substrate for the lab stain is naphthol ASBI phosphatase. The dye is fat blue BB dye. It stains brown to black granules within the cell. The intensity of the stain is scored from 0 to 4+. plus. 
zero being no stain present to four plus being the highest intensity of staining. 100 cells are scored by this intensity rating, and then that number is multiplied by the number of cells. Normal is around uh, 20 to 200. If the patient has a decreased lab score, this indicates that they have CML, which is chronic myelogenous leukemia. A normal lab score indicates CML in remission or with an infection, and an increased lab score indicates a neutrophilic leukemoid reaction. Tartrate resistant acid phosphatase, or the TRAP stain, is used for the detection of hairy cells and hairy cell leukemia. The enzyme acid phosphatase is present in virtually all cells. Um, and L-tartaric -tart acid inhibits the acid phosphatase from staining with this stain in all cells, except the cells of hairy cell leukemia. So hairy cell leukemia cells are the only ones that are going to stain with this trap stain. So um, hairy cells uh, will look red with this stain. Um, and when I was taking hematology when I was in college, my professor told me, um, to associate trap stain with hairy cell leukemia uh, by thinking of all of the hair that gets trapped in the drain cover of your shower. <laughs> it was disgusting, but I still remember it to this day. So maybe that will help you remember it as well. So that's it for enzymatic stains. Let's talk real briefly about non-enzymatic stains. So Sudan Black B or SBB stains the phospholipids, fats, and sterols that are present in the granules of granulocytic cells and in monocytic cells as well, just although a bit less in, in the monocytes. This does not stain lymphocytes. So this is just like the myeloperoxidase stain, just using a non-enzymatic method. Um, so this stain helps to differentiate AML from ALL. Periodic acid shift, or PAS, stains glycogen in all cell lines. Um, it stains like a bright red color. Uh, early precursors in erythroleukemia stain very intensely, um, and in certain forms of AML, uh, the cells will stain very intensely with a periodic acid shift. Toluidine blue O is a basic dye that reacts with granules that are present in basophils and mast cells. All right, so that's it for this lecture. If this video helped you out, go ahead and give it a like, um, and please subscribe to my channel for more educational laboratory content. Until next time.